Hello and welcome to Insight Indonesia, brought to you by the Jakarta Globe. I'm your host, Lynn Newman. Today we're going to talk about education, which is one of my favorite subjects, and I think a lot of us realize that much needs to be done to improve and uh, Indonesian education, come up with new ideas. And with us to talk about one of these uh, fascinating programs is Neni Sumawanata, who is the managing director of the Putra Sampurna Foundation, is going to tell us about the Sampurna Academy. Good morning. Nene, good morning. Thank you for coming down here. My pleasure. As we noticed, we're in the middle of Ramadan, so traffic is better in the morning. Oh, I know. I was <laughs> anticipating it would take me 30 minutes to get here. I got here in 12 minutes. However, it can take you three hours to get any place from here as people are rushing to Buka Puasa in the afternoon. Exactly, yep. So I try and be Correct. wherever I'm going by 3 o'clock in the afternoon and stay put. But anyway, thank, we didn't come here to talk about that. We came here to talk about Sampurna Academy. Uh, Sampurna Academy is a really interesting a program, everything I've heard about it, helping underprivileged kids get a leg up, get a better education. Tell us about Sampurna Academy and what, it, what, it's, what it's all about. Sampurna Academy is an international boarding school and basically it's for senior high. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about children at the age of 14 to 15. So when they complete the, their SMP here, they can join the academy. But we also have certain rules and there yeah. are certain criteria for you to be able to join the academy. So not just anybody can sign up and say, I want to send my kid to this boarding no, school. No, 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 no. To begin with, it's got to be top five to 10% mm -hmm. from, from a public school. And it can be from anywhere in Indonesia. And, and chiefly, this is targeting or assisting underprivileged kids, kids who wouldn't get the opportunity for this kind of education. Correct. Because one thing we learned that underprivileged children, given the opportunity, they will be able to excel much faster than our own children. And definitely more, be, far better than my own children, <laughs> that I can say. I hope Ibu Neni's kids are listening. Pay attention, Mom. Mom's getting you. <laughs> why, why is that, though? What, why, why do you think that uh, the underprivileged kids do well in this well, system? It's, a, it's been a, a whole journey for us, okay? We're entering our 11th year. We learned many new things. So don't think that when we started the foundation that Sampurna Academy was a program that we thought of when we started. Mm. When we started, as you know, we sent many children overseas, right, to the best of schools overseas, to the Kellogg's of the world, okay? One thing we learned is that when they came back, they just thought that that was just an entitlement and mm -hmm. there was no connection whatsoever with the foundation. So we thought, well, that doesn't do us any good because what we're trying to do is help children to help other children. That's the idea because mm -hmm. then you will be able to provide more education to more children. So you provide more education to more children. That was the idea. So the next journey was, well, why don't we take the international education, bring it into Indonesia? So our next journey was to adopt schools. Mm -hmm. So we adopted 22 public schools and two madrasa. And we helped improve the, the curriculum, the quality of the teachers, principals, uh, the superintendent, basically the entire school system. Some of those schools today actually are now, I would say, are in the top national schools. Mm -hmm. And when we started, we took schools that were not ranked at all. You know, they were not in the top 20 or 30 in terms of ranking. The only thing we felt there was like, okay, now we help those schools. We've improved it. But we didn't have full control of the school because we want to make sure that the standards, we have to maintain the standards mm -hmm. that are of good quality and we know that whoever graduates from this system would be able to compete globally. That was the idea. And then came the Sampurna So Academy. then you created these academies yes. and there are now four of them. There are now four of them and this year our first graduate from our two schools in Palembang, Malang, there are about actually initially 232 but six of them were taken by several countries as part of their international programs, student exchange programs. So only 226 mm -hmm. graduated. 25 of them are going to US, 201 have been accepted in top universities in Indonesia. So, so wait a minute, yeah. 226 kids graduate, 226 kids go on to university? Yes. 
Uh, the average in Indonesia going on to university is about 8%, 10%, if that. So you've already created, uh, you, you've broken the mold in a sense. Well, that's our commitment. Our commitment is it starts by putting the kids into Sampurna Academy and our job only ends when we can get those kids that mm -hmm. we've touched they get back into the community and become productive because by doing that they will be able to help other children and that's the whole idea of the whole concept that we're talking about. I'm going to stop you there, we're going to take a break uh, for this segment. When we come back we'll talk more about how the poor kids uh, who come into the system, the underprivileged kids, react to the system and also what some of the uh, what some of the learning is and why they teach in English. You're watching Inside Indonesia brought to you by the Jakarta Globe. Stay with us. Welcome back to Inside Indonesia, brought to you by the Jakarta Globe. Today we're talking about education with Neni Sumawanatha from the uh, Putra Sampurna Foundation. We're talking about the Sampurna Academy. Now, the Academy goes out and finds underprivileged kids Correct. that can go to this international curriculum boarding school. Yeah. There are four of them. How do you find the kids, and how do you, how do you know you got the right kids? Well, first of all, is we, we, we go wherever we have a school, is go to the local Ministry of Education office. Work with them, then we work with schools, and then we would place ads. So we would get a lot of requests. For example, our school in Malang two years ago, we only have 150 seats. Mm -hmm. We had an interest from 8,500 children. Oh and goodness. we need to filter, right, to get mm -hmm. it down to 150. So sometimes what makes us wonders, wonder is what happened to the 830, 8,350 that were not accepted. Didn't get in, sure. So that means they just do not go to school, okay? And as I said, we always start with the top 5 to 10%. Mm -hmm. Then we check, do they have leadership quality? Then we put them into a boot camp. Then we do home visits, because we want to make sure that the parents are comfortable in leaving mm -hmm. their children with mm -hmm. us. You have to remember in Indonesia, I think it's part of our culture, is children don't like to be away from their parents, especially from their sure, mothers. Sure. So even at our academies, the first three months, the children, be it boys or girls, they cry and they miss their hometown course, and they miss the course. parents. So that's why we do home visits, because mm -hmm. we want to make sure that the parents support. What, why, why is it important to have the kids in a boarding school environment rather than just coming and going? Well, we've got, you have to keep them in a boarding because, again, we're going to teach English. We're going to teach them many new things that they had never been taught about. Okay? How do you expect them to go back to the villages and then come back to mm -hmm. this environment? And if we want to uh, also even inculcate our values and get them to understand what we're all about, we need them all in one place mm -hmm. and making sure that everybody there have equal opportunity and everybody's equal. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter which background you come from. And what we also have in our schools at is what you're familiar with, rites and rituals. Mm -hmm. So we say to the children, we have a bonfire before they start. Throw something that is of the past and say, that's the past. Oh, now I'm okay. moving forward, sure, I'm sure. confident. But please write in, on a piece of paper. Oh, yeah. I can remember doing this at summer okay. camp when I was what a kid. What would yeah. you think you'd like to be after, you, after the Sampurna Academy? What mm -hmm. do you think would, you would like to do mm -hmm. and would like to be? Write it on a piece of paper. And then when they graduated, a month ago, I said, let's open what you wrote uh -huh. three years ago and see how close that is to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what you thought would happen to you in the future. Now, now also, the, the principal uh, a medium of instruction in this school is English. Now, Correct. I know you, don't, I know you still teach the Indonesian yes, because, right. of course, that's, that's needed in, in the country, obviously. But why, is, why the emphasis on English? Well, put it this way. If you want to be a global player, if you want to to empower the children, enrich the children. And if you want them to say, you know, you can compete in the global market, if you do not have any command of the foreign language, how will you be able to communicate with people outside mm -hmm. Indonesia? And that's the reason why. But we teach too, so we still have our Indonesian curriculum and we have our Cambridge IGCSE. What's the hardest, what's the hardest thing about taking kids out of that Kampong environment and, and you're really turning them into kind of little global citizens, I guess, in a sense. Uh, what's the hardest thing about doing that? Culture and habits. Mm -hmm. uh, as an example, things that we, t we take for granted, to them it's like something totally new. I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. I used to check and 
their, their bedrooms mm -hmm. to see how it's made up. Did they, is it clean? Did they, did they make it up well? And one day I would go into this room all the time and say, how come this room is always clean? You know, you know that the children did not sleep in the bed. They slept on the floor. <laughs> Now there's a clue. I never thought of that when I was in summer And here's another camp. thing. And <laughs> we have washing machines. Yeah. The idea of having washing machines is that they put it there so that they have more time to study. Mm -hmm. Because apart from the normal studies, the academic studies in the morning till mm -hmm. the afternoon, in the evening we have what we call life skills. Because mm -hmm. they go to go back into the community. We have to teach them things about music, art, mm -hmm entrepreneurship, all those things we teach in the evening. So we say, here's a washing machine. I come back four months later, five mm -hmm. months later, and the washing machine is still brand new. Mm. And I said, why is it not being used? Oh, because the kids said that they, it just doesn't feel right using that. So they prefer they, to they do They prefer the, to do it by hand. Yeah. Do they ever, that we're almost out of time for this segment, but I'm curious, uh, qu quickly, do they ever feel embarrassed about where they came from? How do, you, how do they maintain the link to parents who, by the time they're through the system, are very different people than the kids. That is a very important aspect of what we're doing. That whole bonfire is from, you are special. That's what we say, you're special. That's why you've been accepted at the academy. So you have to be confident. Forget, we say, do not forget where you came from, mm. but all that thing, throw it away, but mm. never forget where you came from. You know, be proud of your parents. That's why we have another ritual. During our inauguration, towards the end, we get the children to give a rose to their parents to right. say thank you. Uh. So, but please forget that you're down there, you're coming from an underprivileged family. That part of it, forget that part. Well, I'm going to stop you there. We've got one more segment. I want to talk about some of the success yes. stories and what the universities are where these kids yeah. are going off to. You're watching Inside Indonesia, brought to you by the Jakarta Globe. Stay with us. Welcome back to Inside Indonesia, brought to you by the Jakarta Globe. Today we're talking with Neni Sumawinata, who is the managing director of the Putra Sampurna Foundation, about the Sampurna Academies and their program working with underprivileged kids in boarding schools. It's a fascinating program. Tell us about some of the success stories. You've had, you started up the 2008-2009 academic year. You've just had your graduation. Tell us about some of the kids who've, who've gone through that journey. Well, the children, I tell you, I, I remember when they first came, when they first started, I tell you, they were, they were like skinny, not attractive, but now when you see them today, full of confidence, and mm. that's the most important thing is full of confidence. We've taught them table manners, apart from academic skills. Now, I might send my daughter over there just for a week <laughs> of table But manners. even before talking about graduation, <laughs> even some of our kids, they participated in uh, Olympiad on Design and Innovation. For two consecutive years, they won the gold awards mm -hmm. from that, okay? And this year, 200, as I said, 226 graduating from the Sampurna Academy from P Malang and Palembang. 25 will be going to the US. They will be going to, let me just, University of Hawaii, mm -hmm. Missouri, Minnesota, West Virginia, um, and Texas Tech, I think, was Texas it. Tech, right. and then Lone Star College system, uh -huh. because they would like to continue uh, and do. Some of them would even like to continue all the way to their uh, complete their masters and mm -hmm. perhaps PhD. It's interesting. Now you mentioned the Lone Star College system, which most people wouldn't know, but that's the junior college that's or the two-year college. colleges in Texas. Yeah. Correct. But as you know, they are accredited. Sure. Right? Oh yes. By, 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 by the university, so you can transfer your credits. Oh, it's one of, I mean, the, 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 that two-year community college system in the United States is, is one of the f few ways that the United States uh, uh, college system is still affordable because you can do your first two yes. years there, transfer all your credits to uh, Texas or California, wherever they have, yes. they have these schools everywhere, and, and you get your first two yeah. years at a very low, yeah. at a very low uh, tuition fee. It's a great system. That's the point, low tuition fee. For even most of our students, we are getting in-state tuition fees. We have spent the whole year trying to negotiate with different universities, trying to bring the cost down. Why? Because we do not want to overburden the children. Mm -hmm. Okay, We just want to make sure they get good ed education. Now, yeah, now that's a question. When they go off, say they're going off to Missouri, mm. uh, who's paying that tuition? Okay. So we have a whole concept. There's another concept. It's talking about sustainability mm -hmm. here, sustainability of the program. As everybody knows, 
entering the SA basically scholarship and we also raise funds from various from various corporations okay and our corporations our donors are local and multinational companies mm -hmm. yeah, a combination of a variety of these sponsors as they get into university we have said to the children look this is the whole concept we get you into university and hopefully when you complete we will also try to f get your job that's mm -hmm. why even from today, we're all building a database of corporations who would take our students. Mm -hmm. And we said, when you start working, please start paying back to this cooperative, which we've okay. given a name. Okay? And so, don't worry how, how much it is, what it's going to cost you, but we'll get you into that university. But, but we've been open to say, the agreement you have is that mm -hmm. once, once you start working, you have to pay back 20% of your salary to the cooperative. So, so in a sense, before, before we run out of time, the, the, what, I'm, what I'm seeing out of this is that you're trying to build a community of 20, 30, 40,000 kids over the course of 20 years who will have gone through your system and then remain kind of part of that system by being part of this cooperative and hopefully helping to keep it going. I, I would imagine a great alumni association would emerge out of this eventually. That is exactly what we want because we cannot rely on the government to do this job because when you talk about education in, in, in Indonesia, it's a huge challenge. So we also have to participate mm. in this and that's one way. And one thing for everybody to remember, if anybody who goes through our system, is they are not attached to our group, mm -hmm. to the founder. They are free to work. So this isn't whenever. a recruitment program no, for the Samporno no, company? No, okay, that's cool. no. It's basically <laughs> it's trying to provide access to education for more Indonesian children. I think we're going to have to stop there, Nenny. This is a fascinating program and, and one of many really interesting private sector initiatives that are going on to help build the education system in Indonesia. And it's one of the, it's one of the kind of inspiring things that I see on this Thank show. You. Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming. It's the, my pleasure. The program is called the Sampurna Academies. It's part of the Putra Sampurna Foundation. And uh, that's what we've been talking about. You've been watching Inside Indonesia, brought to you by the Jakarta Globe. The show is available by live streaming on britasatu.tv and britasatu.com. And we put the shows online at thejakartaglobe.com. Thanks for watching.